Now, President Cyril Ramaphosa has used his weekly newsletter to call for an end to the intimidation of journalists this World Press Freedom Day. This year's day and the index, the World Press Freedom Index that is, compiled by Reporters Without Borders, demonstrates that efforts to control the narrative around the pandemic has led to journalism being blocked in 73% of the 180 countries evaluated. We're also seeing journalists being threatened and their reporting censored. Joining us for this conversation is Wits University Media Studies Department Associate Professor uh, Glenda Daniels, and, uh, and she's going to be telling us more about this and actually weighing in on this conversation. Professor Daniels, good evening, and thank you so much for your time. I suppose we have, you know, both the good and the bad that's coming out of the profession and perceptions uh, by those who receive the work of journalists, and I suppose uh, just also the overall behavior of governments globally uh, towards journalists. Let's begin with the profession itself. We've heard uh, you know, the sentiment being expressed often that journalism is in a deep state of, of crisis or even trouble, not just from a, mon from a monetary perspective in terms of whether there's enough money to keep uh, newsrooms alive for uh, sustainably over the long term. But the, the big issue also around the framing of stories, narratives, which lead to an erosion of the trust with the public. Yes. Thank you for having me, Kathy. So the problem there is that while journalism does its job in the best way that it can, of course it can do a better job, always it can do a better job, there's a conflation of social media with journalism. Mm. And so the story goes that everyone now has access to media, you know, whether it's in, on Facebook or on Twitter or wherever. And this is an era that's rife for disinformation and misinformation and malinformation, which is malicious information. And when people do this, when people do this for whatever reasons, whether it's malicious intent or whether it's just to spread the sensational, a lot of other people think this is journalism. And so the trust in journalism gets eroded, unfortunately. Mm. However, also, with the Press Freedom Index by the, the World Report, the World uh, Report that's just been released, South Africa was number 32 in the world, which is actually quite high up, and interestingly enough, also a higher score than the US and the UK. The latest report, which has just come out yesterday, which is the UNESCO uh, report on the chilling, it's called, online violence against women. That's the worst part of all the press freedom trends that's happening at the moment. And this is happening across the board, across the world, where women journalists are being targeted. And, uh, you know, women are seen as vulnerable targets. And this is a way of cyberbullying, trolling, threats of death, threats of rape. This is the most concerning thing at the moment. And... Governments have not weighed in enough. The law isn't tight enough about that. The big social media giant tech companies are doing very little to protect women because they're enjoying the traction. So that's where we sit at the moment vis-a-vis -vis the good and the bad mm. that you're talking about. Uh, of course, they, there's almost a delicate b balance when it comes to the kind of relationship that uh, newsrooms generally tend to have uh, with social media platforms and from from the perspective of credibility that you're speaking about and and pointing us to do you think that there are different ways that newsrooms can and should be engaging with social media because oftentimes it is the very same journalist who will give perhaps uh, an uh, uh, an amount of attention to what is being said on social media when we know that that is reflective of a portion of the population absolutely but certainly not enough to say it's a generic sentiments of how the entire country perhaps in the example of south africa could well be feeling about a particular issue no you're absolutely right i mean of course this tension is completely related to the fact of what we call clickbait eyeballs and algorithms so the media companies are putting pressure on the editors who are putting pressure on the journalists to, 
to engage on social media and to post their stories and then the journalists get the backlash and then the public do social media with journalism. So, and, and the reason that media companies are doing this is because advertising is going elsewhere and the old business model is over. So media companies are not making money. And so there's this desperation out there, a desperation to how do we make money? And, they, and, and the people at the coalface and at the forefront are actually the journalists who get the backlash. Mm. And the worst of that backlash, backlash, as I was explaining, is actually women journalists, especially women journalists who have high impact uh, in terms of their investigations and, um, you know, blowing the craft out of the water. Um, those are the journalists that get vilified. And this online harassment gets taken over into the real world. It doesn't just remain online. And what we've seen in recent years are an increase in mental health issues, depression and anxiety. Um, you know, because if you're constantly feeling you have to do your job and you're doing uh, the UNESCO um, theme for the year is uh, information as a public good. Obviously, that means journalism is at the center of that. You're doing your job to give out what's supposed to be reliable information to the public, mm. and you get terrible backlash. It actually leads to self-censorship. It actually leads to women leaving the profession because it's yeah. just too hard, and who wants to have threats of, of death and rape? You know? Yeah, and, and and what you're saying is 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 absolutely true. And unfortunately, you know, so many colleagues uh, would form part part of that. That abuse is certainly, um, I think, so extensive. Uh, and and you're absolutely right in terms of the impact that it has on on individuals. I want us to look at you know just the more global responses in terms of. COVID-19 and how that's being used by many governments as a means of um, clamping down on the work of journalists and being able to report very honestly about what's happening in different countries right now. Yes, yeah, so uh, I don't know if India at the moment is clamping down on its uh, journalists because we certainly are, we're getting information from India at the moment. But, you know, in a country like that, where it's just gone crazy with the infection rates and death rates, and they are relating it to the religious festival get-togethers and election campaigning, uh, political rallies and so forth. So, uh, you know, they could start clamping down there because governments now start feeling... Um, they, they're on the back foot because they realized they could have done something a bit earlier. India apparently didn't tell us about this latest new variant that's come out. Um, so what governments want to do is they want to clamp down on information that makes them feel bad. Mm. So far, I have to say, certainly in South Africa, there's the free flow of information. We also have scientists who have different views which is fantastic also, but it also confuses the public, um, that can air their views. Um, there's no clampdown of information uh, in, in South Africa on COVID-19 and the different variants and the different approaches and the different vaccines, etc. However, yes, you're absolutely right. It, it can happen. And then that just, it, where once there's a, you know, a, the free flow of information is stopped, it just leads to panic. It leads to more misinformation. Mm. It leads to people even thinking weird things like um, the whole COVID uh, pandem pandemic is um, fake news. Really ridiculous things. It leads to people thinking, should we be vaccinated? All of which is untrue. Of course, we should be vaccinated. The sooner the better. Uh, you know, and what's happening with rollouts, obviously, we are very slow at the moment with our rollout. We're hoping by next week, the over 60 year olds will indeed start to get vaccinated. Um, but our, our view, in my view, is so far so good about the free flow of information in South Africa about the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, others might disagree, might think that, you know, the, the information gets hidden. But it's exactly the kind of uh, era that we're living in, the COVID-19 era, which leads to 
because it's new, because we haven't experienced a pandemic in our lifetimes of this scale, it leads to the kinds of crises and the kinds of misinformation and disinformation that we have seen generally, globally. Um, and, you know, the, the, that, that's where journalism comes in. It becomes ever more important to trust sources which have proved their trustworthiness. Mm -hmm. Professor Glenda Daniels, let's leave it there for tonight. She's with Wits University.